This is the sickest prison I have ever seen. 900 people sewn together as to mouth. And when you look closely, it's like a giant centipede. To solve the food shortage, pervert Tony came up with this great idea. In the prison, he does no evil. Everyone looks like an animal to him. In order to show his majesty, he grabbed the prisoner who was the leading prick, covered the prisoner's face with a towel, and poured hot water off to 100 degrees directly on it. The prisoner let out a wail of pain. So the tatted man is in big trouble. Tony decides to cook himself and give the tatted brother an operation. But what I didn't expect is that Tony actually has a soft spot for his balls. He even made it into a ham and egg rice, fragrant with egg flavor. I didn't realize Tony liked that kind of stuff. It's like the ceiling of a sicko. That's when John had a bad idea. We skewer all these inmates, so their mouths and butts together. Tony was all ears. Great, this man has what perverted movies. So he proposes to supervise Tony and connect the prisoners into a human centipede. This will save food, recycle it, and supervisor Tony won't be verbally abused by them. So, Tony immediately calls all the prisoners together and shows the human centipede movie series at their viewing party. Two, first lay it out for them. At this point, the inmates did not know that they would soon become one of them and made disgusted exclamations about these movies. As the screening ends, Tony walks in, raises his submachine gun and fires a burst, announcing the start of his experiment. Sure enough, is this acceptable to anyone? The inmates riot at MS. A few of the frequently tortured ones rush to the forefront, making sure to take out this psychopathic maniac. A woeful Tony runs back to his office to hide, then urgently summons the special forces. As he climbs through the window and runs out, the troops arrive and use their weapons to quell the mob. He then walks from cell to cell with an anesthetic rifle and anesthetizes each prisoner personally. Once again, he enjoyed the thrill of power. While humming a song, he shoots one at a time, while the unconscious prisoners are left to their own devices. Cruel Tony sues hundreds of prisoners together to form a gluttonous snake to save money. They take the prisoners' mouths and sew them to the ass of the one in front of them. This way the prisoners don't starve until their sentence is complete. Tony couldn't wait to invite Bob to come and watch. A very long gluttony, Snake packed the prison release grounds. Tony begins to introduce his sick and shocking creation. The prisoners, sewn together at the head and tail, would only need to feed those in front of them, thus saving the prison a billion dollars a year. If, however, they were all sewn together in a circle, so that the food was constantly circulating indefinitely inside, creating a perpetual motion machine, they wouldn't even need to be supplied with food. For the death row inmates, cut off their arms and legs and connect them into a human caterpillar, so that they can't move. Finally, the governor is then brought to the ward. The prisoner lying on the bed was about to be released from prison, and even though he had undergone human surgery, he only had a bit of scarring left on his mouth, and all the other body functions were normal in all the tests, and the scars left behind can always remind him of the cost of committing another crime, and can also deter people in society who want to commit crimes. Supervisor Tony playfully claimed credit with Bob. Bob straight up calls him a douche. He's an animal. It's a good thing I didn't eat today, or I'd be puking my guts out. He said, angrily slamming the door. Bob was about to pull the trigger when the recruiter came back. He was like a different person, and was very much in favor of the plan, stating that it would also most likely be the key to his electoral success. After praising it, he stomped off in a euphoric pace. The two of them hugged each other tightly, but suddenly, a gun was aimed at his head. With a ban, blood and flesh flew. How could Tony, who was always conceited, give the credit to others? Of course it could only be his alone. 